Um, okay, so uh, my name's Chris. Oh, so it's Parvez, don't worry. Parvez. <laughs> Are you staying? No. Okay. No. Well, unless there's any PCP technical questions, I'm going to bat them straight on to you. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so I'm Chris from Bloodwise. Again, uh, I'm going to talk to you about events, PCPs, and CV rules. Um, okay, just out of interest, does anyone use PCP pages here at all? Yeah, yeah. For what kind of sports events or? Uh, Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So just to tell you very quickly about Bloodwise, uh, we were founded in 1960. Um, we changed our name from Leukemia and Lymphoma Research on the 1st of September this year. So Bloodwise, the name is uh, technically just over a month old. We're primarily research focused, so looking for cures um, for leukemia, lymphoma, and myeloma. Um, there are actually 137 kinds of blood cancer, um, and they're one of the most complex forms of cancer as well. So an awful lot of money is needed um, in, order, in order to research uh, cures and treatments. We're primarily sports fundraising um, focused, so we do loads of uh, sporting events uh, from about April to September each year. Um, I'll say a bit more about that later. Um, we're also moving into, into special events as well, so um, you know, shindigs at the Houses of Parliament and stuff like that. Um, yeah, as I mentioned before, uh, in the lightning talk, we're becoming more patient focused, um, so providing services to support patients. Um, and their friends and their family through sort of the journey of having blood cancer, which can be very long and complicated um, and, and sort of drawn out, really, um, compared to some other uh, cancer types. So this is um, an example of some of the stuff that we do. Um, so this is the Blenheim Triathlon, which is every uh, June and um, so triathlons are becoming a massive part of sports fundraising. It is the thing to do at the moment um, and Blenheim raises us um, probably about 250,000 each year, something along those lines um, and we generally have maybe sort of um, 800 to 1,000 participants or so. So it's a good, um, this is one of our flagships, um, it's a good money maker um, shall we say. Um, another one is our London to Paris cycle ride, so that's every September, it's a four day ride um, and it's a closed road event as well which is quite unique for cycling. Many of these charities that will advertise London to Paris, um, that will actually be run through a challenge event company and it won't be closed road. So if anyone is interested in cycling, uh, please do it with us because the, the experience um, you get with uh, doing it with Bloodwise will be way better. Um, another one of our events is the London Bikeathon, which is more of um, it's more of a sort of relaxed ride. Really, um, it's either 26, 50 to 100 miles. Um, it's a day thing, um, and as this advert um, sort of portrays, it's open to sort of all sorts of people. It's kind of like Ride London esque, shall we say? So we have been using Civi since the end of 2011, um, so a couple of years now. Um, we use it for general contact management, so we've got 600,000 records or so. Um, we use it to process all of our donations. Um, so we turn over about 20 million, um, so we process about 20, 25,000 a day um, in donations. So that's direct debit, standing orders, um, donations online, so both one-off and uh, DDs. Um, all of our PCP pages, payroll giving, um, legacies, you name it. Um, CIVI produces the um, export files for our accounting system, so we have all of the uh, accounting and ledger codes um, sitting behind financial types and campaigns, um, and it uh, spits those files out into Sun accounts. 
Um, event registration um, is a massive part for us. Um, so we run, we probably have about 140 events in Civi every year, um, 10,000, 11,000 participants, something along those lines, um, lots of custom fields, lots of um, odd bits of information that regional fundraisers want to know about their participants, like the name of their dogs, uh, the breed of their dogs, that kind of thing for sort of, you know, family friendly uh, fundraising days type thing. Um, so that's quite interesting to, to sort of contend with. Ah, and I put a note to myself, role-based event forms and profiles. So this is something that we've just developed with um, Vader. Um, so this is where a Civi event can have more than one form attached to it. And the driver of, uh, the driver of that is the actual form. Sorry, not the form, the role, um, the participant role. So if you've got a participant role of I don't know, say adult, then um, it, Civi will generate that form which you can add the profiles to and then publish that somewhere on your website. But if you have, say, another role of, um, well, we use things like golden bond places, which is maybe, ma uh, maybe more for major donors, um, we now have the functionality to generate two, um, two sort of entry forms from that one event. Um, via this sort of Civi extension, which will be available. So if I just come out of this presentation very quickly and just show you it, because uh, I had it up here somewhere. Where was that event? Um, sorry, I've got loads of versions. Okay, yeah, I'm in staging. Um, so, info and settings. And hopefully the internet connection hasn't dropped out. Nope. But it's taking its time. So, do you want a free G? Um, actually, what network have I got on? Oh, I know. It's because I was on Parvis's iPad and he's now left the room. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's try Resource for London. Oh, cheers, Jamie. Yeah, it's not, it's not happening. Um, okay, which one are we doing? So, all I'm going to show you is just the registration URLs down here. So, you just create an event as normal, um, and then when you save the initial screen, um, it generates all of these unique URLs based on um, what roles you select. So, as you can see, these are the roles that we have um, in Bloodwise Civi at the moment. Um, and then, if necessary, I could create you know, all of these different forms and put them in different places on our website or have different buttons licking through them. And then there'll be different profiles sitting behind that. Um, so that's just one thing that I wanted to tell you guys about um, because I'm conscious that events has come up quite a lot um, in, this, uh, in this Civicon. Um, we, I don't think we've developed that functionality yet, but I yeah, and then you've got to think like how that would fit in with the maximum event um, capacity as well, if it, if, if it would fall over with, if you didn't get those numbers right, or, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure that can't be that difficult to, to do, potentially. Yeah. And then it gives you five different 
Yeah, so, so this is for, um, this is primarily for participants who register with third parties. So if they're doing all of the you know, ch challenge events like Kilimanjaro or Iceland Trek and stuff like that, they're doing it all with different companies. Um, and we want to manage them each as their own sort of unique campaign and um, associated event in Civi so that we can see which ones are doing well. Um, so they, all of those events have the participant role of own place. Um, and then they will have sort of a set of predefined fields which won't really change that much by event. Um, but the one, what will change is the profiles that we have um, in this sort of events where people actively register on our website, if that makes sense. And then we have this overlap where we have um, one event where, um, where we work with, well, I say an event, there's quite a few of them, where we organize them, organize them with third parties. So people are registering, well, they can either register on our website or they can register via a third party. So that's where sort of there's, um, we found the need to, to sort of have this customization, really. Um, again, it's, I've literally only just been playing around with it, so I haven't actually even published a, um, a form yet to actually sort of, you know, go through the journey from start to finish. But um, yeah, hopefully it does what I want it to do. Um, okay, so CV Mail, uh, we use that massively. We've got hundreds and hundreds of mailings which go out, so scheduled mailings. Um, but also um, schedule reminders as well. Um, case management, as I mentioned in the last presentation, um, with the patient support uh, call center functionality um, and the Outlook integration. Um, and we uh, claim our gift data all on Civi with the integrated HMRC um, sort of module. Um, we have faced some challenges, um, I will be honest. Um, it's, we have um, thousands and thousands of duplicates um, on our system. Maybe, you know, we could be talking about 50,000 duplicates here. Um, the existing CV rules, um, CV rules, sorry, the existing CV dedupe criteria do not meet our requirements. Um, they aren't um, sort of thorough enough um, to, to do what we want them to do, basically. Um, so again, I am developing a sort of dedupe module um, which sort of forces some records to be merged together um, and allows sort of users to, to view these records in a, in a lot more de detail but then batch them up very quickly and then force them to, um, to be merged together. But there's a set of overarching rules um, which will prevent in all circumstances some records being merged. So for example, where you've got two records and a Drupal account on each one, um, that would then be sort of flagged as a, as a manual one to be worked through, if that makes sense. So again, that's something I've been working on for the last couple of months. Um, had to drop it with our name change, but I'll be returning back to it in about a month or so. So um, yeah, by Christmas, there should be, again, another extension, um, which will sort of um, concentrate on dupes. Um, one of the other issues that we've had, um, who gets what bit of communication, when and why? Um, there's you know, sort of been a lot of internal argument um, about that. Obviously the beauty about CV mail is you can send um, huge amounts um, of emails very quickly to uh, this group, that group. Um, and sometimes it results in people getting quite bombarded um, with emails from different teams, different departments, different buildings um, and that's no fault of the system whatsoever um, that is just sort of more the way internally that that we use the system um, yeah but it's it's one thing that i sort of uh, contend with on a daily basis as well as sort of this question of why doesn't civi do this or that or you know why doesn't civi make me a cup of tea in the morning type thing it's quite um, yeah, I often sort of find I, I get one of those, um, those questions quite a lot. Again, nothing really to do with the system because um, from a CRM perspective, the functionality that you get with Civi is um, often way and above sort of um, other CRMs that are available out there. Um, this is one of the big challenge, a team doing a certain thing in a certain way, but another team doing it in a, in a different way. 
um, because that's how it's always been and that's how people have trained their new team members and then um, new team me those new team members are then subsequently trained new new team members in that way um, and trying to break that cycle um, can be quite hard um, particularly if you work across different offices and different floors so um, it, it can be sort of I don't want to look as though I'm sort of coming into a team and saying you're doing this wrong and you have been doing it from day one you need to do it like this that doesn't generally get a, um, a good response when you're training um, this is a good one they're my contacts not yours um, so this is sort of you know the debate between major donors and general individual giving you know who's talking to who who gets precedence um, yeah I'm I'm sure there are um, many of you guys who sort of experience that as well. It's just, it's one of those things, I think. Um, I don't have the solution if anyone does. Uh, please see me afterwards. <laughs> and, okay, this is probably, this has been the main issue that we have had over the past year. Um, and I'm just wondering, does anyone, is anyone aware of, has anyone heard of this at all? Our, the smart groups and the um, ACL issue. Okay, right. So, this is one um, that has caused a huge number of problems. So, in Civi, when you do certain things, it causes the smart groups to rebuild. So that can be when someone makes a donation online, when you add an event, when you add a participant to an event, when you add a custom field, it causes these smart groups to rebuild, as it should. So the smart group is then checking if that action means that there's an additional contact or a contribution or whatever that should then be added to that group, which is absolutely fine. However, when you have quite complex smart groups, so for example, smart groups that are sitting within scheduled reminders, you know, um, they attempt to try and rebuild themselves and then um, the issue that I have found is that they they then get stuck. So for example, if you're going through a very busy period on your website where people are donating and donating and donating, every time that donation is submitted and the contribution goes down into Civi, the smart group tries to rebuild itself. So when that smart group is attached to a schedule reminder, it is constant in a constant cycle of rebuilding to the point where it doesn't actually complete its rebuild. Um, so it essentially completely locks up and then you get this issue with table locking and what that means is that there are various tables, particularly custom tables, which will just completely disappear from Civi. So for example, if you've got a Civi event profile uh, made up of custom fields, that suddenly disappears from your website. Your users um, won't see any custom tabs that appear um, from the contact record. Um, and that has been a real challenge to sort of uh, get over in, in the last year or so. And we've been working sort of really hard on, on finding a solution. I have to caveat that with this only happens when you have a database which is under en an enormous amount of pressure each day. So it's getting constantly sort of bombarded as the one at Bloodwise is because the, of the volume and the amount of donations that we receive, the number of events that we're creating, but then we also have sort of 60, 70 users using it on a daily basis. So this is a Civi scalability um, consideration, shall we say. Um, so this has caused some issues with PCPs, um, which I'll go into further. However, um, as we've just gone through, that's the, um, that's the impact that we've had. Um, and yeah, so some users, some members of the public have, been, ha um, have received error messages on donation pages. And um, unfortunately, it has resulted in, in some instances, a loss of income for the organization. But we have um, built a solution for it um, because we, we simply had to. Um, so that there, we have built an override function um, for smart groups. And essentially what that does is that was, I think, quite a complex sort of code to write, which essentially controls when smart groups will rebuild. And the database admin having the ability to actually control when that smart group sh should rebuild. So should it be on an hourly basis or should it be actually like a nightly job? 
And so then what we moved to is we moved uh, most of our smart groups to rebuild on a nightly basis with only the most important ones um, rebuilding on an hourly basis. And again, I caveat this with um, Bloodwise having maybe 700 smart groups type thing. So normally, you know, on a very small to medium sized charity, this is not an issue with Civi. I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, sort of merely saying, giving my own examples of sort of our experience with the, with the system. We've also found that, you know, us internally, we, we've had to be more smarter in terms of using Civi. So actually, um, when we broke down what was happening in some of the schedule reminders and the, and the SQL that was in those smart groups, um, it was actually quite messy SQL, actually, which was sort of exacerbating the issue that we were having. So we then had to sort of clean that up and we had to, we have to sort of completely look at the way that we use schedule reminders and actually use them in a, in a much more sort of um, intuitive way, shall we say. And that involves um, using Civi rules as much as possible. And instead of triggering um, schedule reminders of contributions, for example, triggering them off um, activities um, such as event registrations um, or um, the actual event registration itself, you know, thing, using these triggers which use up sort of less capacity within Civi. Um, yeah, so that's been sort of quite, quite a learning curve. Um, and you know, there's a possibility that we, uh, we would like to work with the core team to find a longer term, well, a long term solution to this um, in case any other sort of organization uh, comes across this issue. Um, okay, so just to give you some insight into our, um, our future projects. Um, so we're gonna work on SMS integration um, and we're going to find a UK provider to do that. I think I've got one. Um, and they, they seem up for, for doing the integration piece with Civi. Um, so that's something I'm hoping to do over the next six months or so. So that will be the mass sort of text to donate um, ability. But then um, I'm also quite interested to push that more um, in terms of uh, sort of sports logistics, SMSs, um, you know, in sort of the run up to our sporting events. But also in terms of our patient support work, having single, um, the ability to send single te text messages from Civi. So from the user um, to the supporter um, about you know, their particular patient situation and then having the ability for the, um, the patient to text back and you know, obviously that to work seamlessly and um, that conversation to appear on the Civi contact record. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to um, by the, well, by sort of next spring, we'll be in a position where we can do that. And the support line screen, um, again, that's, uh, that's coming. Well, that's pretty much done um, and just rolling that out. Um, here's a good one. So integrating Microsoft Word um, with Civi for acknowledgements. Um, hello. What do you mean with uh, support line screens? Um, so that was what I presented in the lightning talk uh, about half an hour ago. Yeah, it's that, that customized UI which just basically simplifies um, Civi a bit and draws in Civi case and Civi activities, but in a slightly more sort of, um, slightly more sort of streamlined way um, compared to just looking at the contact record view. Um, yeah, so I wanna integrate Word with um, Civi because um, it would help our front-facing sort of supportive relations teams um, quite a bit. This is something that they've mentioned quite a lot, that um, sometimes the way that the, um, the acknowledgements are produced in PDF um, are not um, amazingly easy to work with. Um, so that's one thing that I want to look into. And maybe do some more work with gift aid reports um, for, obviously, this is a UK context. Hello, Jamie. Yeah, so um, basically that would work for um, our batching system. So, you know, when you get sort of 25, 30 contributions together, um, that goes into a batch. Um, it, it pings off to the, um, well, it produces the export file for the finance system, but then at the same time prepares the acknowledgement letters, which is what it does at the moment. Um, then what would happen is um, that would get 
that would get sent to Word, and I can't quite remember how, but they'd literally sort of come out in a ream, if that makes sense. So one document uh, with 30 acknowledgements in there, um, and then there, there would be like a, well, so the user would be able to edit it, and then there'd be a save and send it back to Civi. What that would do would then be create a, um, an activity on each contact record um, with that Word document, but it would have to be that the in sort of all 30 documents, if that makes sense. We couldn't find a way sort of easily of splitting it out by contact record. So just having one letter and one contact record, the other letter on um, the other one. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Um, it, it's just it's it seemed to take too much time and like create because um, they were having to be converted uh, like into Word on a on an individual basis and then. Um, and then sort of played around with and then actually converted back into, um, into PDF again. Yeah, so it's just, I'm, I'm not sure that this is like the sort of overall solution for that issue, but I think it's like a step, um, a step forward, if that makes sense. Um, okay. Okay, so back to why do we do PCPs? Um, okay, well, Obviously, there's, well, in the UK context, context there's uh, many other sort of um, giving vehicles out there, fundraising giving vehicles. So Just Giving, uh, Virgin Money Giving, BT My Donate, um, to name a few. And, you know, some people will ask the question of, well, why, why do you want to do it within Civi? Why do you want to do personal campaign pages? Um, you know, these guys, they've got it sorted. They've got, like, you know, 25 developers working full time, that kind of thing. It's like, well, yeah, I, I get that, but you know, this is, it, it's not as black and white as it seems. Um, so what I want to show is uh, this example, and this is um, one of our triathlon teams. So this is um, Scarlet's Dragon. So basically, this is a six-year-old girl called Scarlet who um, has a form of leukemia and um, this has become sort of like a massive movement and um, her family do huge fundraising for us each year um, at the Blenheim Triathlon. And you know, so we're talking about 200 participants, 250 participants each year and they raise, as you can see, a hell of a lot of money for us. And I'm just not happy by the fact that um, up until sort of, you know, a couple of months ago, we've been, it, we've been managing this through Virgin Money Giving and I just don't, I'll be honest, there is nothing about this page that I like. Um, and we've also heard that actually um, last year, VMG completely mucked up their team management ability. Um, so, you know, they, so our fundraisers ended up getting a bad experience from one of these massive third party providers um, who are some of our you know, biggest fundraisers. So, you know, it was, it, the case for sort of PCP was starting to look um, much stronger. Um, likewise with, uh, you know, some of our corporate partners, they, to keep them um, within PCPs and within our sort of um, website environment when they're creating sort of their PCPs. I say when they're creating PCPs, but I'll come back to that in a second. Um, but it's much, it looks much better for us to be, to be managing that relationship within our website environment rather than sending them off to JG or VMG. And also, it's a bit different as well. Like, you know, every charity uses those. We, you know, we still um, receive a large amount of income from JG and VMG, but, you know, to actually do that within our own website environment is, is still sort of quite unique, really. Um, oh, I don't know why I left the presentation there. Also, the data um, that we get from, um, from those giving vehicles is, I mean, it's all right. Um, the import is a bit of a pain in the backside to, uh, to get it into Civi, to code all the pages correctly, to 
get the fundraiser, to get the donor, get the soft credit and the hard credit right, etc. Um, and also, no one wants to sign up to your charity when they give that way. 10% 10, 10 of people who give via Just Giving will give their information. Um, you know, it's really, really low figures, slightly higher within VMG. Um, but also, I don't know if you guys have seen, like the, the payment reports that you have to work with from those agencies are ridiculous. Like um, 40, 50 cells long. It's just, you know, we don't have time to do that. We're all stretched and all really busy. So, yeah, we need to do it ourselves, basically. So we started this project um, about a year ago and we started with these sort of big questions. So um, what are we doing PCPs for? Um, well, primarily for um, people doing our sporting events, our um, Bloodwise organised sporting events. Um, but then we also thought, well, you know, people do their own thing, you know, children in need, styling. Um, so perhaps we can create PCP pages that will sort of factor for that as well. And who's going to be doing them? Well, obviously individuals, um, but you know, individuals will often um, work as teams, especially in triathlons and things like that. Not so much for things like the London Marathon, but um, team events, again, in sort of um, fundraising are becoming um, ever more popular um, in the UK particularly. Um, and then as corporates as well, um, that's a big sort of element of uh, fundraising in the UK at the moment, uh, corporate partnerships um, and, and forming those, you know, forming those relationships with the big four banks, etc. Um, and the third question, why? Um, why, why are you doing um, what you're doing um, for us? Well, um, a lot of the time it's because people love the sport um, or they're doing it in memory of someone or in support of someone who's going through blood cancer at the moment um, or they're doing it in celebration. So mum and dad's wedding anniversary or you know, someone's wedding, etc. So we came up with this sort of definitive set of rules for how we would uh, manage uh, PCPs. Um, so they were that um, every individual has to be authenticated. So um, every individual has to sign up um, and create an account with us. Um, and then every individual would um, have a personal campaign page. So regardless of if they were part of a team or not, and the hierarchy would be individual and then team. Um, any donation made, the hard credit uh, sits on the sponsor's record um, and the soft credit um, sits within the uh, PCP record, um, which is how um, PCPs were created in, in CIVI anyway. Um, and in our structure, a donation will have um, at least one soft credit, but could have a, um, a maximum of four soft credits. Um, and again, that I'll tell you about the structure in a second. So we kind of put our, we, we put our heads together and we were just like, yeah, okay, we, we need to think about all of the journeys here. You know, there, there could be people coming in from this way, that way, and they're going to be doing it in memory of someone, but they want a team, but then they're going to be part of Barclays. And, you know, this is, this is getting really exciting. Um, you know, we can, we can literally like, this is just giving, but in PCP format. Um, and yeah, I won't even bother to um, try and like zoom in on that. But you know, it's just a, like a series of questions and, and responses, etc. And then you know, so at, we were like, right, we've we've got this on paper now. Now we just need to go and do it, and it's going to be amazing. Um, and this is what the hierarchy is going to be. We're going to have individuals, teams, groups, and corporates. You know. Uh, fairly self-explanatory. This is how all, of the, all the soft credits are going to work, and it's just going to be it's just going to be fantastic. So let the development begin. Um, so we all sort of went off on our jolly way, and we're just like, yeah, this is this is amazing. Um, and then suddenly, a couple of months into it, we kind of hit a bit of a wall, and just thought, oh crikey, this is actually taking a hell of a lot longer than expected. Um, and uh, my budget has run out already. Um, and oh, sorry for that typo. And actually, now some of the teams are coming to us with uh, different requirements to what they originally sort of said. Um, and that happened particularly with a corporate team um, who initially said, 
oh no, you know, they're, they're, they'll all do it themselves. You know, everyone from Barclays are going to create, you know, their own page and do this, that and the other. And then a couple of months later, actually, no, the, you know, the head of asset management doesn't have time to create his own personal campaign page. You know, every, we have to do it for him and we have to create an account and, you know, um, yeah, just these, those kind of things that we just not hadn't, we hadn't factored in at all. Um, so the end result of that, of that was that we had a partial go live um, in time for the uh, summer events this year. So we sort of went live in about May time um, and just with five sporting events. And we had the functionality um, of individuals uh, creating their PCP pages and assigning themselves to a team or creating a team. Uh, so we had the Drupal sign-up journey, uh, which then pushed into the um, event registration page, which then, um, you know, sometimes there was payment, sometimes there wasn't, and then which pushed them into the PCP creation journey. Um, and then the relationships worked. So the, um, the person setting up the team had the relationship of team admin. Um, he or she could invite up to five people um, to join the team during the PCP creation stage. So that's the PCP telefriend function, um, which is just on the event record. Um, I'll come to that in a second. Um, yeah, and those, those sort of relationships are all working. The contact records are being created in Civi. You know, that, that bit was fairly solid. Um, so our initial successes have been that um, our sign-ups to our mailing list from donors um, has increased dramatically um, because donors are giving via a PCP page within Bloodwise, um, you know, they seem to be more willing to give us their, well, they have to give us our contact details anyway, but to actually sign up for our newsletter, um, which is good. Our average donations have gone up um, not quite sure what they were before, but with PCP they're about £25. Um, the user is, you know, has a consistent journey and they're kept within our branding environment, which is great. Um, and this was a feedback from a sponsor, um, or a fundraiser, sorry. Um, it's all good that funds go directly to the charity. Um, it's a no-hassle way um, for fundraisers to direct people um, to make a sponsorship, basically. So all in all, it's been relatively good. Um, and the, obviously the benefit of doing that, of doing PCPs is that, you know, we're using contribution pages, we're, we can use the scheduled mailings in a right way. Yeah. Can I just ask you, yeah. um, on the gift aid, uh, yeah. the percentage gift aid cl uh, uh, claim, has that been similar to the experience with uh, the online uh, agencies? Um, as in the number of donors that... That have signed a, a gift aid, because that was always the argument we are just giving, the, that the improvements on uh, gift aid uh, paid for the fees that they charge, so... I think for, for us it makes no difference. Yeah, I'd say it should be no difference. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because it's literally when... So when the user's making the donation, they're just looking at a normal contribution form, um, just with the gift aid um, statement and the checkbox. Um, they do it for just giving, they do it for you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, arguably, it could, it could even be higher. Um, actually, that's something I haven't, I haven't looked into, to be honest. Um, but yeah, good point. Um, yeah, we keep all our data in one place. Um, we, so our imports, with just giving and VMG are getting smaller. Um, in 4.6, which hoping to move to um, at Christmas, um, all things going well, um, we can start doing sort of A-B testing um, with some of those sponsorship segments. Um, by the way, so those, there's always this issue with these, um, with sponsors uh, donating to fundraisers and how, how a charity actually sort of um, tries to sort of connect with those people because obviously you have that sort of you you have that barrier of the fundraiser in between you and barrier is probably actually the wrong word but you know it it can be quite difficult to to get that that particular group to engage 
Um, so, you know, we're going to try um, various things with like a welcome cycle, which uses Civi rules. Um, and, but also when we're in 4.6, we can do sort of a lot more with A-B testing as well, see if subject lines and different emails will, will do anything for that. Um, and we'll be quite happy to sort of share um, any knowledge that comes um, out of that. Uh, we use a reporting system called Pentaho. Um, and because everything is in PCP um, and is in our backend tables, we can pull out that information um, quite easily um, and export it into Pentaho. Um, okay, so some of the key issues that have been fed back to us um, initially. With this issue of not being able to find a PCP page, um, and this is, so this is an internal staff issue. Um, so classic scenario is I receive a call from a fundraiser um, and they're trying to find this page in Civi and um, they can't find it. Um, the reason being is that um, our, you know, like we have two or three thousand PCPs, so um, to open the PCP page doesn't, that doesn't work when you're on the phone to someone um, and people then, if they find their contact record, having to navigate through um, into Drupal and then finding the record. Um, there is, we need a tab, a, a nice tidy tab on, a, on the Civi contact record which will just pull some key information about each PCP page that um, that, that person has. How can I set up a PCP page for someone else or for a corporate? Um, well, at the moment that's you know relatively tricky and involves lots of incognito windows, etc. Um, and then pasting stuff together in an email, here's your account details. Um, yeah, it's a bit fiddly. Um, I want to send someone a personalized invitation email to my, to my potential team members. At the moment, it's, um, it's a default template, so we just give them the option to enter their, um, the guest email addresses. Um, yeah, that's one thing that we need to look at. Um, I'm not receiving any emails from you, so that harks back to the, um, the smart um, group issue that we were having. Um, so fundraisers weren't receiving um, any issue, um, any emails that were coming out of um, automated uh, schedule reminders. Um, team members, um, the team leader was required to authorize the team member. Um, so even though they'd they'd invited um, that prospective team member. Um, they then had to log into the dashboard to actually authorize that person. Um, and that was basically a step that we thought that we needed, but actually it turns out that that's quite um, convoluted and we don't actually need that. If they've been invited, then of course the team admin wants them to be part of their team, um, if that makes sense. Uh, so we had these issue where you know, the team admin then wasn't logging on and actually authorizing this person. So then this, this person's, um, that individual's sort of uh, PCP total wasn't, wasn't joining up with the, with the team one, if that makes sense. Um, had some issues changing the team administrator, because um, that happened, and we didn't really have any functionality for that. Um, and also, what, what do we do with these people who've been invited to a team, but then they haven't done anything? That was quite, that's quite an issue, because like, mm, well, okay, we don't, Someone else has given us that information about that person and it's created this record in Civi and haven't done anything. They've got an email from us. How far can we take this? You know, like, can we send an email pretending to be the team admin? Or is that not politically correct? Um, yeah, again, that's sort of, that's more of like an internal kind of PCP management issue, I think. Um, but I'm sure, yeah, we could, we could build some functionality around that. So, uh, our timeline for the winter is um, we will build um, the CV contact record tab for PCPs um, and I'm sure that that will be um, something that we can uh, release um, as an extension. Um, we need to tweak our workflow for setting up um, uh, PCPs, linking them to teams and then the next stage is linking that to a corporate. Um, so team pages we call TCPs and uh, group or corporate pages we call GCPs um, just to sort of try and make that that differentiation. Uh, I think we need a few more email tokens as well um, to make the journey a bit more um, a bit more personalized um, 
And we're also going to start, <laughs> this is where we should have started. We should have started with tribute and in celebration PCP contribute pages because they are easy peasy. Um, so right now we've been talking about PCP pages which are event linked. So they're, they're all linked to a, um, an event and the associated <coughs> campaign. But PCP contribute pages, it's literally just a contribution page. Um, nothing more, nothing less. Um, so um, you can have an in-tribute one. Um, well, we want to have an in-tribute one. Um, and an in-celebration, so, you know, mum and dad's wedding anniversary or, or whatever. Um, and, yeah, in hindsight, that's where we should have started with because that's uh, relatively simple to achieve. Um, but, yeah, we didn't do that. Um, okay, so the work that we want to do with Civi rules, um, yeah, as I said, we need to be much smarter with smart groups. So um, we'd like to develop um, Civi rules um, and specifically to look at PCPs. So rather than look at the actual contributions that sit within PCPs, I want them to look at the PCPs as a whole. Um, so identify PCP records where, for example, no donation has been received. Um, put those uh, contacts into a group, do something with that group, send some kind of incentive email um, or activation email, or even actually, you know, trigger an activity so supporter care can actually call them and find out, you know, you know what's happening with your fundraising type thing. Um, target incentives, so for example, with uh, a triathlon, when a PCP, page is, uh, PCP page reaches 400 pounds, um, in our world, in Bloodwise world, that means that that person will get a free triathlon suit. So, um, you know, I envisage like a nightly query in Civi Rules, um, pulling out PCP pages for that event um, where the aggregate is at 400, um, adding them to a group, getting that group into Schedule Reminder, and getting them out an email um, to a, with a link to a web form so that they can just um, enter their triathlon suit size, etc. Um, and then we'll get that sent out to them. Um, again, so banding of, of PCPs, um, so amount raised between sort of 0 and 200, 2 and 4, um, 4 and 6, etc. Um, and, you know, maybe getting some colour coding behind that as well. So, well, ragging, red, amber, green, so we can automatically kind of pull out the, um, the red flagged um, PCP pages and then uh, contact them. Um, a fundraiser reaches 10k, um, so then what we'd like to do is sort of, you know, remove their contact subtype of individual um, or, you know, normal donor um, and add the contact subtype of major donor and then the uh, major donor um, manager will be notified of that via their dashboard, uh, etc. Um, yeah, and then, as I mentioned, we might um, try some rules with A-B testing for sponsors uh, to try and sort of get some interest out of them. Um, and then something that we do at the moment, actually, welcome journeys. So um, when someone signs up on our website, um, they get placed into one of our main e-newsletter group. But then um, CV rules overrides that and they pull them straight out for 30 days while they go through a different journey. Um, this, is, this is sort of going down the route of where MAF Norway are. Um, so they get pulled out of that group temporarily for 30 days while they get a welcome cycle, which is um, four scheduled reminders at 7, 14, 21, 28. And then after day 30, they get released back into the main group. So then they start to receive our, our main, um, our monthly um, email communication. Oh, sorry. Um, but yeah, that's just, that, that's like one of the first things that we've done with PCPs um, and also using Civi rules. So I kind of, I feel like the sky's the limit with, with Civi rules. It's, it seems like the, one of the most, uh, well, one of the parts of Civi that really sort of excites me at the moment. Um, and I think a lot of people can definitely make um, some good use out of it. Um, so my advice when it comes to PCPs, um, if, if you're considering doing it, um, conf make sure that you get your requirements down and um, that you, you all sort of reach consensus about what you want to get out of them. Um, 
and don't do too much at once um, because that's been, that's been a learning curve for Bloodwise um, when we thought we could do it all very quickly but actually you know, suddenly discovered that oh, PCPs are they're great um, and you know, as we develop them we, will, we have less reliance on third party systems but we have to um, have a adequate time to actually develop them. Um, front end styling um, has to be factored in um, and that I'll, I'll be honest that that was quite a big job for us to to get them up to standard um, and I'll show you one um, in a second and um, yeah just doing a planned rollout really um, yeah I think what else that's the end of the presentation so I'll just quickly show you um, a couple of examples uh, what have we got here Okay, so this is one of our pages. Um, this is um, a cycling group, uh, the Ridgeway Riders, who just did the London to Paris. So this is just their default, um, well, the default PCP image at the moment. Um, they've raised nearly 10 grand. Um, so this is the team admin, um, and that's the honor roll on the right. And the team admin is him, and then there's three other riders. And so, yeah, it's fairly, fairly sort of simple. Um, we could probably sort of jazz this up quite a bit. Um, but yeah, as I said, when we sort of got halfway through this project and then um, we migrated to Bloodwise um, and went through a name change. So sort of the, the next stage is, is sort of working on this over the winter. So if you donate to the team, it will just take you through to the contribution page. So Ridgeway Riders. And yeah, this is just our standard contribution page. Um, leaving a message um, on the honor roll. Some additional information, gift aid. Yeah, and that's it really. Um, what can I show you now? Um, okay, I'll show you one of our corporates. So this is a fundraising event that we do called Light the Night, which actually happened on Wednesday. Um, so this is, this is primarily a corporate event. Um, and these are some of the guys that are part of it. So if you go into Barclays, this is our Barclays team. Um, and let's have a look at one of theirs. So this is, uh, this is an, an example of a group page. Um, however, this is actually done in Drupal um, because we needed to do this quickly um, and we hadn't got to a position where we could get PCP to do this. However, um, when, we get, when we get that functionality this winter, it will do essentially the same thing. So this is the Barclays group page. These are all the teams within Barclays. So if we click on the Dragon Boat team, who've raised three and a half grand. Um, so this is a TCP, just a, a team page. And okay, at the moment, there's just William Bennett in there. Um, some of them will have other team members. But yeah, this is, this is pretty much it, to be honest. Um, yeah, so that is uh, what Bloodwise has been doing with PCPs. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, essentially, yeah. Um, so if we just go back to this team page. So if I click on Carl, so it takes me to his profile, um, and then his individual page. So that's his team page here, and then this is his individual page. Uh, 
Um, so it is this structure. So it's this structure just here. So how does that work? So as in you've got a group or an organization. Yeah. And yeah. the personal campaign page is against the individuals at the bottom, is it? Yeah, but then um, the teams the teams have a PCP page and the group has a um, an overall PCP page. However, what, um, what we're probably going to do with group pages, because we haven't actually developed them in yet, but take away the donate functionality. So it will just be a totalizer. So if you think like um, HSBC have raised 55 grand, for example, but that's from five teams, and then those five teams are made up of five individuals. Does that make sense? So do the actual teams have a separate personal campaign page as well? Yes. They do? Yeah. Depends what their relationship is, to be honest. Um, yeah, and that and that's one thing that we we kind of had to we had to draw a line in the, in the sand and say, right, for us to develop this, we we have to have this rule that every individual and every team have to have a page. Um, so yeah, I mean, it really depends on how the fundraiser um, wants to wants to sort of share how they're fundraising. Um, so for example, that team, Scarlet Dragon. Um, it, it's likely that they will literally just share the um, the actual fundraising, the team fundraising page, rather than the individuals. But through the process of the individual signing up to the event, they will by default get an individual PCP page. And actually. So It is, it does total, because that, so it works on soft credits. Yeah. So if an individual is part of a team and that team is part of a corporate, then um, the donation will go onto the sponsor's record, but it will soft credit three times. So soft credit individual PCP, soft credit TCP, and soft credit GCP. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It really is. Um, I actually just thought I should really show you, try and show you what the journey looks like. Um, but let me just think where I am right now. Did you have to make any changes then also to the site, like the creator PCP page, or the use kind of city standard for that? And like the edit PCP, because you know, like the edit your PCP page to that bit. Yeah, at the moment it's fairly standard from memory, um, yeah. I can't think that we did very much customization. Um, yeah, in terms of like upload an image, add a bit of text, set your fundraising goal. Um, so like for example, the image upload, it specifies that there's a certain size of image that you should upload that doesn't do copy, staging or anything like that? I don't know. I don't might think we've done any custom. Yeah. I don't know. I'd have to check that out, actually. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Um, let me just see if I can find an event so I can just show you the journey. Um, Where am I going? Sorry. <laughs> so if I go to event links. Okay, so sorry. So here's the sort of start of the journey post um, event registration. 
Um, in this instance, actually, um, this, tri this works off the own place role. So, yeah, I don't know, say someone's registered on a third party website for an event. Um, they're then faced with this, with this question. Um, and this needs a bit of tidying up, actually, since we migrated some of the, um, it doesn't look as neat as it used to. Um, so, do I already have a place at this event? Yes, I do. And then this should take me through to the creation stage. Um, okay, am I doing this as part of a team? Uh, no, I'm doing this on my own. Um, so if I did that, it would just create an individual PCP um, and that would be the end of it. Um, or I'd like to create my own team or I would like to join an existing team. Um, so let's see if we can join an existing. Yeah, we definitely need to do some tweaking of this page. Team. Okay, it's not actually finding a team, unfortunately. Um, let's try and create. Uh, I see, so um, this event is Brighton Marathon 2016. Um, and the reason why it's not finding um, any teams is because that search is limited to, that, to teams which are associated with that event. So it's looking for the PCP page with that event ID. And because we haven't had any registrations for Brighton Marathon yet, it's not finding anything. Um, So let's create team test. <laughs> team test already exists. OK, so who would I like to invite? So, yeah. Oh, sorry. Are we way over time? Okay. Sure. So let's invite Palmes. Hmm. There's some weird, weird stuff going on here. Yeah, but you get the gist. So, yeah, I just enter the email addresses. Um, and then I'll just continue and then they'll get an email. Any other questions? Okay, thanks very much.